Uh, so I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and talk about um, service dogs and ADA rights um, and just kind of, you know, a couple things that I've experienced. Um, so it was an incident at Starbucks today. Um, in this particular Starbucks, I have gone to every day on my day off um, for as long as I can remember. And Lexi always, you know, obviously goes with me um, whenever I'm off. So they all know her pretty well. I mean, they know me. They know her. Um, and we've never really had it, any access issues, um, anything major to write home about. Um, we've had one incident at this particular store before, um, where it was someone new who didn't really know us, and I don't know, had never really seen, um, such things, I guess, before, <laughs> and, um, she asked a, too many questions, kind of, about, um, what she was for and that kind of thing, um, so we already had that incident, which wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, I don't mind, like, explaining, yeah, she's a service dog, um, you know, or that she's a service dog for this, um, you know, whatever has to be explained. Um, but in this particular situation, um, basically was told that my dog is not allowed to have her paws on the counter for any reason. Um because it's a food service establishment or area uh, or whatever that she said. Um, so, you know, there's been a, it, it's hard because it is such a fine line of, you know, understanding this is a place where people are getting food, they're getting drinks, um, that kind of thing. Um, and there's, been a lot of where we've seen dogs who are definitely not service dogs kind of out in the community a lot more often. Um, so I think it's just getting harder for places to really figure out like what's real, what's not real. Um, and so I can definitely understand a lot of that, uh, I guess, confusion on their part, you know, um, because they probably see a lot more than I know. Um, but service dogs are specifically trained for a very specific task, um, you know, depending on what their handler needs. And for me currently, because of my neck situation, my vertigo is really intense and my balance issues are pretty bad. So for me, her mobility tasks are the most important right now because any wrong move for me or a fall, anything like that could be, you know, potentially serious. So um, she, I basically need her kind of watching a lot of what I'm doing because um, I'm pretty uncoordinated right now. Um, in this particular location where they have I always mobile order um, and where they have the like mobile order pickup. Um, it's just a small like, you know, little counter and the straws are like forever away from the counter. Um, I'm only five foot, so trying to reach for these is pretty hard. Um, and I don't use my chair right now because I hate using it. Um, probably should more than I do, but uh, that's not really the point. Um, but, so I always have to reach really far for the straws, like, on my tippy toes, like, reaching over for them. And at this point, like, that, it does make me a little nervous. Not that anything would probably happen, but you just don't know. Um, because, it's like, reaching up and stuff like that is hard. So, I mean, having to do all of that, is like, you can just pull them closer. Um, but, something that Lexi has done since she was younger, because I was in a 
in my chair a lot more when I first got her was, you know, her reaching up um, to give cashiers my debit card wallet, whatever, to help. You know, obviously the ones that are, like, low down, you know. Um, but she has obviously been taught how to give them things, take things back for me. Um, yeah, if I'm not in my chair, then no, it's not as big of a deal. But it is a task that she was taught and trained for for a very long time. So for her, she doesn't know that that's a counter where it's a food establishment, you know. And this is not my dog who is, like, going to the salad bar and, like, up there eating salad off the salad bar. <laughs> you know, this is a situation where I'm reaching for something and... For me, that's scary, and so I tell her paws up um, because I want her right there, you know. Um, that might not make sense to a lot of people. If you don't have a service dog, then you might not understand the fear and falling. Um, so, basically, I was told by the manager and the barista that she's not allowed to have paws up for any reason. Um no, granted, if my dog is in there showing her butt and up on the counter eating things, taking someone's food, whatever, okay, sure, like, we have, a, we have a problem, you know, that we should probably address. A, she's probably not trained right, or B, she shouldn't be a service dog if she's acting like that. That's not the case here. This is not, that's not my dog. I mean, if she has her paws up, it's because she's been told to do it. Um... So, I took my coffee, got back in the car, and thought about it for a few minutes, and was like, no, you, you can do a lot of things if a dog is, like, unruly, yeah, um, but you can't take away a specific task that someone has trained their dog for just because of whatever, um, so, and I understand it's a food establishment, and so I feel like there is a fine line here. Um, it's, re it's really tough, um, and I get it. I, I really do get it. I've never worked in a restaurant or a food place, so I don't totally understand, but I always feel very cringy when we're in any kind of place that has food because I feel like people just don't understand, whether it's people that are there or the people that work there. Or whatever and I'm always very nervous to go to new places and this is why I go to the same Starbucks the same Target the same everything where people know us and I feel like I will be less likely to be questioned harassed whatever um, so I did go back in and tell them you know I had my ADA up I carry a little card around with me um, but you know I brought up the things about like I scrolled to uh, things about restaurants you know it's not really a restaurant, um, and just kind of reviewed that, and I was like, um, you know, you can't tell me no, my dog can't do something. If she's in there barking at someone, sure, tell us something. If she's in there taking food off the counter, you know, great, we have, great, that's a problem. Um, but in this case, I felt like it was just a lack of knowledge on their part which has happened before, um, and I just am really big on advocating for service dog team rights, disability rights, because I think there's a lot of people that look at you and wonder, why does that girl have that dog? What is she doing? Um, there's nothing that that dog could be doing for her. And I know it's going through all their minds. So trying to, to like, wrestle with that and just go about your business, too, is, it's hard. Um, so I just want to kind of bring awareness that, like, service dogs, they're not just for people who can't see well or... Um, people who are in their chairs all the time, you know, I'm not always 
in my chair. I leave it at work um, usually because I have her here. I don't have her at work. So um, there's just a lot of things that I hope that Starbucks can learn from this situation. Um, and hopefully no one else will have to go through that. Um, there's always going to be discrimination and hate and everything because people are people and they're rude um, and they're never going to get it unless they live it I mean, they might get it. <laughs> um, but I had the privilege of talking to their district manager who was a joy to, to speak to. Um, she was very understanding and, um, you know, I explained to her like, I get it. You have food there. I get it. You don't want a nasty dog in there, as these people are probably thinking. Um, but, you know, that dog is helping me in so many ways that none of them know about. So if I need her to reach up and get that straw, she's going to do it for me. And none of them are going to tell me that she's not. Um, that might seem a little harsh, but unless you live this life every day, I have no idea what it's like to go out and deal with the public. Um, so their whole staff is going to be retrained on ADA, uh, hopefully by next week. <laughs> so, um, but and don't anyone please leave me any negativity, nasty comments about your dog shouldn't have her paws anywhere in a food service place. Um, Unless you have a service dog team and you can relate to this in some way. Um, because I get it, it does seem, I guess, gross to most people. Um, if you want me to Clorox the counter, I will. <laughs> I don't have a problem doing that. Um, what I do have a problem with is someone trying to take away rights and tasks that have been instilled in this dog. Um, especially right now, as sick as I am. So, that's just a little about that. Um, and if anyone else has had similar situations somewhere, um, you know, where they feel like they've been basically attacked for their dog doing something to help that people didn't understand, I would love to hear from you and kind of what that was like and what you did and what steps you took. Because um, I only talked to their corporate and their district manager, and I feel like hopefully that's enough in this situation. Um, I'm a little worried it might not be. So, I've never taken anything to the ADA. Because um, I feel like they probably get so many complaints. And they there's a lot of it that they probably just can't look into or take seriously, you know. Because this is a huge corporation that has signs on every door that says, We welcome service animals. So, if you're going to have that on your doors, you must understand what that means and what service animals are about, what ADA is about. You must understand all of it um, in order for you to say, yeah, they're welcome here, you know, um, because no one should have to feel like they can't even go in to places like that because of whatever's wrong with people. Um, that's just a little bit about that. And I really want to hear from you guys if anyone has experienced anything like this, who has a service dog, especially a big one like I do, because I think it's a little intimidating for people. Um, so I just kind of want to know how you guys have handled it. Um, and that's that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully no one else has to experience things like this, but I know it happens every day. So I just kind of wanted to go into that a little bit, just because... It's such a well-known place, you know, um, and it's just happening more and more. So really just, like, advocating has to be a priority um, and standing up for, you know, what's okay and what's not okay. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to hear from you guys and just kind of see what other people had thoughts on. Um, yeah, have a good day.